she with her singing ass. Let's get to the show. Hey y'all, it's your girl Q, and today we are making a beautiful big ass pot of gumbo, y'all. Now let's get into it. We hopping right into it. Now I'm putting some fresh black pepper, and y'all know how I feel about fresh black pepper. We're putting some of that fresh black pepper into this big pot. And in this big stock pot, I also have a whole onion, some carrots, some celery, some green onion, I mean, some green bell pepper, excuse me, black garlic, and regular garlic. Now I'm adding in garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, hey, paprika, some turmeric, some parsley, Yes, some um, some fresh thyme and some fresh bay leaf. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So now we're gonna add in some Marsala wine because what I'm doing is, is I'm making my own chicken stock and some perfect pitch Italian dressing, some Worcestershire sauce because I can say Worcestershire sauce. We're throwing in some dark soy sauce because we want this stock to be rich and to be very beautiful, to be a important basis, a very important basis of this gumbo, y'all. It's gonna be so immaculate. I also added in some red crushed pepper flake and that's to add a little heat. I'm gonna be adding um, levels of heat all throughout. It's gonna be amazing. Now look at this. This is the stock that we will be using. So deep, so rich, so beautiful, and flavorful. I allowed that um, stock to just boil down and then I strained off all the liquid. And then of course it kept those beautiful seasonings, those herbs, those spices. And this is um, gonna go inside of the gumbo after we make that roux. Now look at the chicken. Y'all see those veggies and stuff? Don't worry, I got something for that. Yes, now look at this. We have the Holy Trinity, <laughs> of course. Onion, bell pepper, and celery. And we're gonna go ahead and cut that on up. We're gonna dice up the celery. Yes, y'all, when I tell you this was just so packed full of flavor. Oh my God. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut up this uh, beautiful green bell pepper. Slice it on up like that, yes. Dice it up. Absolutely. And this was a very special meal. I'm telling you, y'all, I had just I just ate it. I literally just ate it. This is all happening in the same day. I just finished cooking it, just finished eating it. Now, this is the next day. Yesterday um, is when I made that beautiful stock. You know what I'm saying? And then those flavors of that stock were allowed to sit and mellow together overnight. Oh my God, y'all. When I tell you, it was special. It was special. It was special and beautiful. And it made me feel very, 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 very awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and dice up this onion as well. And y'all know I'm gonna come with that kick, right? So for that kick, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add in two habanero peppers. Yes. And what I'm doing with the aromatics, remember I told y'all, hold on, don't worry about it. Those aromatics, y'all know I don't like to waste stuff. So I'm blending those aromatics up into this gold paste. Look at how beautiful that is. That's gonna go back into the gumbo. Now well, let's make our root. Now the root really is one of the most important parts of a successful gumbo. So now we're starting off with some grapeseed oil and some sweet cream unsalted butter. And then I added in some flour to that. I'm adding in some ghee because I want to make sure that I use all this flour. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want it to be clumpy. You know what I mean? You want it to be a, a decent root. Now it's going to cook out the um, it doesn't cook out the oil completely, but it cooks a lot of that oil out and it cooks out a lot of that flour. So now we have a blonde roux, you see? Yeah, you see how it's a blonde roux right now, but it's too light. I need it dark. I want this to be a dark roux. Look at that. Still not all the way ready yet, okay? It's still not where I specifically want it to be. I could have allowed this to get a little bit darker, but I was like, listen, I want to go on here. <laughs> and get this going but this was a very beautiful very dark very beautiful dark uh luscious uh roux and i really i really like this so now we're going to deglaze with some marsala wine a little bit of marsala wine and as that is going we're going to add in our 
Holy Trinity. We're going to add in that mirepoix, also called a mirepoix. Mirepoix is, uh, includes carrots too. But we're, this isn't Creole. I didn't do the Creole version. This version is um, thick and voluptuous, child. Very delicious. Now we're going to add in some more Marsala wine. Yes. Now we're going to add in our garlic. Y'all already know about that. <laughs> we're just going to throw in a bunch of garlic. Because it's, gar it's, it's so much beautiful depth of flavor all in and through this entire process. And now we've added in that beautiful stock that we made. Yes. And I'm telling you, yeah, it's a little bit more work. Not really. But it's worth it. It's worth it. I'm telling you, you'll, you'll be able to tell the difference. And if you notice, I didn't put in a bunch of salt into that stock. This is a low sodium stock. So we're going to season this. Um, like I said, we're seasoning the um, gumbo on multiple levels, of course, you know, but it's not chock full of just salt. This is beautiful right here. We're going to throw in some diced tomatoes and chilies. We've added in the other chicken from that beautiful stock, okay? And I need to swap out this pot. The pot was too doggone small because I still have a lot more to put into this. So now we're gonna add in that beautiful gold paste with all those aromatics. Yes, and that habanero pepper that's gonna also add in some spice. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And that stock was just infused with all that time, all that. But I'm gonna add some more time to this in a little bit. Hold on. Added in some water, of course. Yes. And uh, um, earlier, added in a can of diced tomatoes and chilies. Rotel, rotel that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now we're gonna add in that beautiful andouille sausage. This is a chicken andouille sausage. I wanna make this again and I wanna try it with the actual, either a beef or a pork sausage. I wanna see what those flavor profiles do because this was just immaculate. When I tell y'all, I'm and I'm sitting in the tub right now, I'm damn near two clicks from falling asleep on y'all ass. I ain't lying, I feel wonderful, okay. So now I added in some, some thyme, some garlic powder, some Cajun seasoning. You know what I'm saying? Now we're adding in some of the salt. You know what I'm saying? We're seasoning it. We're gonna add in some parsley. Yes, God, honey. We're gonna add in some more onion powder. Yes, season it. You know what I'm saying? Multiple levels of seasoning. Yeah. Ooh. And then I took those fresh okra that I froze last night. So I took some fresh okra, washed it real good, cut it up into um, little okra coins, and then I froze it. And now that's what I'm putting into the gumbo right now, adding in that beautiful okra. What is a gumbo without okra, child? I don't know, but I sure don't want it. I like it like this. Now we adding in some more seasoning salt. Yes. Well, actually we're adding in seasoning salt um, for the first time. And then we're adding in some water, some more water. Yes. You want to be able to have everything because I don't want it like clumpy. You know what I'm saying? You want it to be robust and you want it to be, but you want it to be silky. You feel me? Yeah. Beautiful. Give that some beautiful stirs. Uh-huh. Now we're gonna put the top on that. Now that needs to cook on down. Ooh, do y'all see this? <laughs> but it ain't ready just yet. Thank you, Mama Africa, for these beautiful okra. Thank you, ancestors, for gumbo. We're gonna be using jasmine rice, which I cooked this time. Now look at this. We're gonna throw in the shrimp at the last minute. Look at those colossal size shrimp. Those are nice size shrimp. They've been rinsed. They're still a little frozen, which is cool because they're, you know, it's gonna heat up with the pot liquor. It's gonna get it cooking. Beautiful. Add those shrimp on in there, get it a stir. A couple few stirs. Yeah. Let those go on and cook. Golly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Now we made I will I made some cheesy garlic knots and there's the rice. 
beautifully cooking as it should. I made the rice this time today. Um, and then look at that. Oh. Hmm. Look at how beautiful and rich and delicious. Like, look at it though. Like, I know y'all see that. Cause I sure see it. The beautiful sausage, those shrimp. Look at the richness and the depth of that salt, that gumbo, the actual gumbo. That's gumbo with a capital G. No cap though, you feel? <laughs> Be still my heart. Be still my heart. Now I'm almost there. Woo! Child, look at her. Now look at the plate. Look at the plate up. Look at that. How beautiful. Now it's time to dig in. There's so much beauty and love and heritage in this bowl, in this bowl. My God, look at that. Oh, the first bite. Look at that, I had, to put the, I, had, I had to put the spoon back down because my mind was in a place of, damn, you just really cooked this. Like you, and can I tell y'all a secret? Can I share something with y'all? This is my first time making gumbo. <laughs> this is my first time ever in life attempting to make gumbo. And look at it. And if I had made any mistakes or anything, I would have showed y'all that. I would have put that in there. I'm not pretentious in that way. You know what I'm saying? Everybody make mistakes and shit. But this, this right here, came from my soul. It was like I, I knew what to do. I knew what to do. I was watching High on the Hog and they were talking about the gumbo and all that different stuff. And so I Googled, I looked around at some things, but I knew I wanted it, wanted to do it my way. I went and go I went and got me some more of that. <laughs> got some more of that gumbo baby it felt like it was too much rice and not enough gumbo ratio i had to even that out make sure it was perfectly balanced you feel me now we're gonna throw in some of that frank's bread hot sauce wow i know most people use the louisiana i love louisiana hot sauce crystals too i like hot sauce per you feel me and i definitely would have threw some in there had i had it but that's what i had and it's very flavorful y'all just incredibly delicious this did my soul so good, y'all. This did my soul perfectly right. Sure. I'm talking about I just enjoyed this. And that's what I kind of wanted to talk to y'all about is trying new things. Look how beautiful that is. I mean, it was just instinct. It was just like instinct. It was instinctful. It was instinctive. That's the word. <laughs> but I felt it in my soul the way that it should go and i thought about how i wanted to put the components together and the love of just going and stirring that pot and then you know making sure that root came out the right color like it takes you know love and skill in that thing do that and then it just hit out perfect with that green onion it just do something to it y'all i'm telling you that black garlic the white garlic regular garlic you know what i'm saying all those different just levels of flavor the marsala wine the, you know what i'm saying the actual seasonings and everything because off camera i was tasting and seasoning it and balancing it out too now i didn't put any sugar or anything sweet in this i didn't put nothing sweet in this gumbo but it the actual flavors from that root curated a beautiful gentle sweetness that sugar would have just overdid it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with sweet, but this wasn't the place for the sugar. You feel me? This wasn't the place for that. I put in that love and it created its own gentle sweetness that balanced out this meal perfectly. 
then the snap from them fresh green onions, and then the shrimp, and then the andouille sausage. Then you got the chicken just woven all in and through it. You know what I'm saying? The depth of that, of that, and then the okra. Y'all, I'm gonna sleep good. Y'all just don't know. I normally sleep very well. I sleep actually really well. But y'all just don't know. I'm gonna sleep good. <laughs> we, I'm sure after I'm done with this, I'm putting my feet up and enjoying the rest of the day. Yes, God, honey. Yes, God. Look at how beautiful that is. Look at all that okra in there. Her ancestors knew exactly what they was doing, bringing this from Africa to America to tie together both worlds and to make sure that we didn't forget. And people would be like, oh, you just got to forget everything, forget this. Forget. Some things you need to remember. And so that's why we have to remember what our ancestors went through so that we don't allow that type of shit to continue on or to happen again. And that's why I know I've been watching on my Twitter, like there's so much legislation and um, I'm glad that we have more people that are with it, that are understanding what needs to be done. They're, they're understanding the assignment and they're getting in to make sure that um, the filibuster and all these things are destroyed and that we usher in a new era of treating human beings as human beings and it's extremely important y'all it's something that i've been watching and seeing a lot of and the filibuster is a piece of legislation that blocks a lot of the positive changes that need to occur it really does so we need to get rid of that filibuster so that we can be able to pass the laws that need to be passed in order for people to get the help that they need and different things of that nature. I don't know all the dot dot dots, but I do know that the filibuster, the filibuster is very um, connected with uh, Jim Crow and all that type of shit. Voter suppression and all that other stuff. Icky things that we need to get rid of, but look at that. <laughs> hold on, wait y'all, hold up. Did y'all see that shrimp? Did y'all see how that just, oh my God. Wow. But anyway, and that's what I, I really wanted to, I just wanted to touch on that. Um, so it's just, you know, staying aware and seeing what's really going on, seeing what's really good, you know what I'm saying? And making sure that we are standing up for one another and, you know what I'm saying, standing side by side. And also um, pride is not just a party in the street you feel me pride was a riot we got out there and we rioted you know what i'm saying and a lot of people who moved that movement forward were trans people trans men and trans women trans women mostly and trans men who were out there fighting for our rights to be able to be as queer as we desire to be without persecution without being persecuted and it's so much that still needs to be done so if we are ever talking about black rights or you know what i'm saying black lives mattering black lives ain't gonna matter until all black lives matter every single last one whether it be trans whether it be bi whether it be queer whether it be you know what i'm saying dark skin light skin whether it be gay straight whatever it is you understand what i'm saying we have to look out for each other to create a world that is going to be better for these generations that's coming up period and that's just the dot on it you know what i'm saying because i know we can do it you know what i mean time to, for people to shed those old ways of thinking that shit don't work you know what i'm saying because i'd be damned if somebody tell me i can't be who the fuck i am Period. You understand? Because who I am and who you are, y'all already know, is amazing. Just like this food. Period. Eh. I 
Alright y'all, thanks for coming through once again and vibing with your girl Q. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and I hope you guys like this video. And if you guys like this art, go ahead and hit that like button. Also hit that subscribe button so you can subscribe to your girl. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the freshness coming from the fresh squad. I got it. <laughs>